blessed be your glorious name.
like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cared for. Gentlemen, may I have your attention? I want to introduce to you in this corner of the good and the right, there stands a champion robed in white. His height exceeds the heavens. His weight outweighs the world His reach reaches everywhere His age is evermore He is higher than the highest Greater than the great No one will ever take his crown away He's more mighty than the mightiest and he reigns from above. He's the all-time undisputed, undefeated champion of love. He left his hometown to enter this arena to raise his hands in victory. For you and me But an angry crowd They crucified This king who wore their crown And they gladly watched The champion going down Oh, but I will never count him out For I'm a witness of That day he arose to retain the title Champion of Greater than the great, no one will ever take his crown away. He's more mighty than the mightiest, and he reigns from above. He is higher than the highest, greater than the great, no one will ever take his crown away. Amen. Good evening, church. Glad you're here. Let's stand together. Glad you're here on a Wednesday night. It's been a great week. Hopefully, it's been great for you. Take your psalm books, 588. 588. Let's stand together. 588. My sins are gone. Thank God for that. Sing loud. Obviously, we do not have a piano tonight, but it's okay. That's why the... The hymnals are here, but sing loud to the Lord if it would uh, turn on. 588. You ask me why I'm happy, so I'll just tell you why. Because my sins are gone. And when I meet the scoffers who ask me where they are, I sing. 
Sing it out on the last. I'm living now for Jesus on happy night and day because my sins are gone. My soul is filled with music. With all my heart I say I know my sins are gone. There underneath the blood on the cross of Calvary as far removed as darkness is from God in the sea of God's forgetfulness that's good My sins are gone. Amen. Glad you guys are here. Let's pray. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Let's pray, guys, together as we uh, dedicate this time to our Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you for the night. Thank you for the blessing to be in church, Lord. It's such a joy, such a refresher being in the world, Lord, and uh, gathering, Lord, with our brothers and sisters in Christ, gathering uh, not for religious obligation, not just so we can uh, please a person, Please a man, but Lord, we come here to please you. We come here to have our soul stirred, our our uh, energy renewed, our spiritual energy, Lord. And tonight, I pray you bless it. Thank you for the opportunity to gather in your house, Lord. I pray you bless the singing, Lord. Help our hearts, help our minds to be attentive and just be in tune with what you have for us tonight, Lord. We love you and we'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. 633, Jesus loves even me. Pay attention to the wording on there. Loves even me. Even Terrell. Amen. 633. Sing it out. I am so glad that our Father in heaven tells of his love in the book he has given. is the dearest that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Though I forget him and wander away, still he does love me wherever I stray. church oh if there's only one song i can sing when in his beauty i see your great king this shall my song in eternity be oh what a wonder that jesus loves me i am so glad that jesus loves me jesus loves me jesus loves me i am so glad You guys sound great. Uh, a couple announcements you want to make tonight. 
Uh, Give It All Sunday is in about a month uh, from this Sunday. So if God allows you and if you're able to, uh, give to the church. Give all that you can uh, for that particular week, April 28th, going toward New Vance. So hopefully uh, the Lord will help you with that. Uh, this Sunday, we have our Resurrection Sunday, our Easter Sunday. So invite people. Don't forget, we have new tracks in the back and a great opportunity to bring a visitor. I know it's a very religious time for people where um, they fill their two uh, church services a year, you know, Chris, um, Easter Sunday and Christmas. But hopefully they'll come here and have an impact and realize that there's church after that. Amen. So there's not just on this particular Sunday. Along with that, we have our Easter egg hunt. All kids are welcome after church that day. We'll have um, our all the bus routes together. And if your kids want to come, I'll set a location here at the end of the service. Most likely will be at Clark Elementary School or uh, Clark Middle School in the parking lot. Because if you could tell outside, it's really hard to find a... Uh, playground without any snow covering it so we'll do it at a parking lot and I have a very great idea that um, will allow us to save these uh, Easter eggs we're actually gonna have nothing in the Easter eggs Um, what we're gonna do is when they get their eggs the amount that they receive they'll be able to um, or the amount they receive they'll get that in return for candy so hopefully um, you guys can help with that also, I do want to mention, um, I believe Teenagers Friday, but if you're able to help uh, close the eggs and put them in a bag, uh, please see me. We have about a couple stacks of them. Um, not a lot, but if you're able to help throughout the week and just put them in a bag and give them to me, I'd appreciate it with that. So see me, see me if you're able to help with that. Uh, the Lord's Supper that night, the Lord's Supper that night, if you're able to make it, we'll have a, uh, this is one of the two ordinances in the church the ordinance is the things that we as celebrate as Christians. We have the baptism and then the ordinance of the Lord's Supper, a time to dedicate to the Lord. And Jesus said, this do in remembrance of me. So that is the evening service. We'll do that in the, um, the beginning of the service, and then we'll have a shorter service, as Pastor mentions with that. Um, Brother Joshua, I need you. Um, actually, never mind. I'll do that after uh, later this evening. Okay, so uh, Anchored in Hope. This Friday, if he struggles with addiction, not just any addiction, but if he struggles with any stubborn habits of the flesh that you just want victory over, you should come to Anchor and Hope Friday. Brother Chris does an amazing job in helping us from a Bible standpoint on how to overcome whatever the flesh is taking over in your life, whether it be uh, pride, whether it be sin, and just anything like that. If you struggle with addictions or stubborn habits, the Lord will help you um, by coming to that, okay? Uh, teen activity this Friday. Teenagers, be ready. Um, contact whoever's picking you up. Get a hold of preacher, and we'll get that set up as far as teen activity this Friday. And if you're able to make it, like I said, there's tracks in the back. There's new tracks. If you're able to come soul winning, that we can help do a big push for Easter Sunday. We'd love to have you here at 10 o'clock. Uh, downstairs, we'll gather with the other bus workers and such. So hopefully you can be here for Saturday soul winning. And so tonight, we have a prayer letter, a prayer letter from the Wilkerson family. And so these guys are church planters to West Africa serving in Benin. So I have a prayer letter here, and we'll also see their location of where they're serving, and also some photos that they have sent as well. So let me just read that. Brother Joshua, I'm going to send you a photo real quick. Um, If you could just be ready for that, put it on the right um, iPad, and I'll I'll let you know when to look at it, okay? So from the Wilkinson family, dear supporters and prayer partners, we are so excited to be sending out our first report letter since being back on the field. We finished our short furlough and returned to Benin back on January the 25th. We spent the next month setting up our home and applying for our visas, hiring language tutors, buying a car, enrolling the kids in school, and accomplishing as much as possible to settle in. God had in His hand, and God had His hand in all of these details. We reached many of the goals we had set for the first month. Back on February the 27th, we began our fawn class. If you can see there, um, that's their family. But here in the photo here, um, the gentleman here on the top left with me, they are uh, teaching different languages. So as many of you already know, this is the second language we will learn to better equip us for the work here in Benin. We already learned French, which is a common trade language spoken across West Africa. Fon is a local language specific to southern Benin. Although French is understood fairly well in the cities, There are many villages and thousands of people that do not understand French at all. Even within the cities, we have noticed a preference and love for the local language, or they call it the heart language. 
Vaughn is interesting, full of uh, history, culture, and it's fun to speak. But beyond this, Vaughn is a priceless tool for the gospel ministry. We are praying God will uh, give us this language in one year. We already had such an incredible positive feedback and conversation just from the last two weeks of practicing. People are excited to speak with us um, and help us learn. Please pray that God will help us grow in our abilities to speak and write and read fawn. Uh, last month was filled with paperwork, errands, and more paperwork. Through all of this, gospel opened doors for gospel conversations. Waiting in line doesn't just have to be waiting. It's a, often a great time to witness. Dozens of people have heard the gospel clearly presented to them last month in just um, day-to-day -day witnessing. I've also had the opportunity to visit a village. You'll see here in this photo. He's in the top left there. He's had the opportunity to visit a village and share the gospel with all those who were willing to come out and listen. We are thanking the Lord for each of these divine um, appointments. Please continue to keep us in your prayers as we strive to faithfully serve Christ and joyfully do all that he has called us to do. Your missionaries in Benin, that's Nate, Emily, Azariah, Asher, and Alaska Wilkerson. So that's the uh, prayer letter for the Wilkersons. Let's take a moment to pray for them, and then we'll uh, carry on here with the service. Uh, guys in the back, we won't worry about it because it's not pulling up. I'll worry about that after church. Okay, let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for the great news that you have helped the Wilkerson's in, Lord, and uh, give them safety back from their furlough back home to their mission field of Benin. Thank you for the opportunity you've given them, Lord, to learn and comprehend the fond language, to be able to help the people there, Lord, and be able to share the gospel. Well, I think of Acts, when you gave them the gift of speaking in tongues, it wasn't some uh, vain babbling or any uh, confusion as far as what they were speaking. I believe you gave them the spirit, Lord, to be able to speak in their native language without even having to um, comprehend or understand the language, Lord. And you've given the Wilkerson's this opportunity to share it, Lord, and to learn. I pray you give them the wisdom as they spend the next year learning it and being able to share and speak and uh, preach the gospel to this, these lost people in Benin, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity you've given them. We ask that you would help them. Lord, help their family. I know with Alaska being uh, relatively new, Lord, to the world, I pray that you would give her health Help their marriage, help their family, Lord. Help the kids as they just do their best to go where you've called them. And we'll praise you for it. Thank you for those who do give to missions in our church. And we pray that you would help them, Lord, by faith to give to these mission um, field, the missions offerings and realize it's not in vain. But perhaps their money that they think is nothing or it is much when you're in in included. We lift them up tonight, Lord, asking that you help them. I pray you bless the service to follow. Thank you for the opportunity to gather in your house. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Take your psalm books, 373. We're going to teach. Uh, this is a song that's been in the hymnal, and I, I learned it. And I think it'll help us. Jesus never fails. Some of you have probably sung this, but it's a great truth. If not, this is a great opportunity to learn it. Okay? So Jesus never fails. Join us on the first. Earthly friends may prove untrue. Doubt and fears assail. One still loves and cares for you. Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. Jesus. 
Jesus never fail as verse in life's dark and bitter hour love will still prevail trust his everlasting power Jesus will not fail Jesus never Jesus never fail. Amen. Great truth. How many people sung that before? A couple people sung that before? Good. Praise the Lord for that. So let's uh, ushers come on forward. Let's take our others, tithes and others offering. Or not others, sorry. Tithes and offerings here. Um, give as the Lord gives you. The Bible says that God loveth a cheerful giver. So let's make sure we do that. Let's bow our heads as we dedicate this time. Father, we pray that you would help, Lord, this time. Lord, as we give by faith, Lord, I know with uh, the world's economics now, Lord, uh, um, inflation's hurting families, inflation's hurting uh, people who rent, people who own homes, Lord, but none of that matters because ultimately all the money we've been given is through you, because of you, Lord, and uh, we give it by faith. I pray for those who do faithfully give, that you bless them for it, Lord. May they see the, the fruits of their labor and giving to you and not just financial blessings, but just knowing that your hand is with us, Lord. If we never got a single dime in this world, we can be satisfied because we have you. And tonight, Lord, as we give to your house, Lord, we give to you through the church. I ask that you bless now, please. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Get your Bibles, please. Genesis chapter number 40. Genesis chapter number 40. Genesis chapter 40. Glad you're in church tonight. So good to be in the Lord's house. Genesis chapter 40, please. And I hope that the message will help you as it's helped me when I found um, the truth in this and convicted me realistically. And that's what a message does. A message is not something that we think that the church needs. It's something that we all need, um, including myself. It's not just something that we just say, hey, you need to do this and I'm going to watch you do it. No, it's a, a message. A sermon is something that say, hey, it, it convicts me. So I need to do better on doing it. Let me share something that helps the church. And so that's what the message tonight will do. Lord willing. So Genesis 40, the Bible says in verse number one, and it came to pass after these things that the butler of the king of Egypt and the baker had offended their Lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was wroth against two of his officers, against the chief of the butlers and against the chief of the bakers. And he put them in the ward of the house of the captain of the guard into the prison, the place where Joseph was bound. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them, and he served them, and they continued a season in war. So the idea there of a season, they spent some time there in this prison house. Verse number uh, five. And they dreamed a dream, both of them, each man his dream in one night. 
each man according to the interpretation of the, his dream. But the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, which were bound in prison. Um, let me see. Guys, you know if this is on? If not, it's fine. Okay, that's fine. Um, verse 6, forgive me. And Joseph came unto them in the morning and looked upon them. Behold, they were sad. So they had this dream here, and they were pretty sad about it. In verse 7, And he asked Pharaoh's officers that were with him in the ward of his Lord's house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly today? And they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me then, I pray you. And the chief butler told his dream to Joseph and said to him, In my dream, behold, a vine was before me. And in the vine there were three branches, and it was as though it budded, and her blossom shot forth, and the clusters thereof brought forth ripe grapes. And the Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes, and I pressed them into Pharaoh's cup, and I gave the cup into, Pharaoh, into Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph said unto him, This is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days, and yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thine head, and restore thee in thy place. And thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand after the former manner, when thou wast his butler. But, pay attention to verse 14, But think on me. When it shall be well with thee, and show kindness, I pray thee unto me, and make mention of me unto Pharaoh, and bring me out of this house. For indeed I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews, and here I have done have I done nothing that they should put me into this dungeon. And when the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good, he said unto Joseph, I also was in my dream. And behold, I had three white baskets on my head, and in the uppermost baskets there was of all manner of baked meats for Pharaoh. And the birds did eat out of the basket upon my head. And Joseph answered and said, This is the interpretation thereof. The three baskets are three days. Yet within three days, verse number 19, Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thy head from off thee, and shall hang thee on a tree. And the birds shall eat thy flesh from off thee. And it came to pass, which was on the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast unto all his servants. And he lifted up the head of the chief butler and of the chief baker among his servants. And he restored the chief butler unto his butlership again. And he gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. But look at verse 22. But he hanged the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted them. And look at verse 23. Yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forgot him. And look at verse 41 real quick. Verse number 1. And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed and behold he stood by the river let's pray and we'll uh, get into the message here we just see here obviously the story and I'll talk about it here in a second let's pray Father we pray that you would help this time now Lord to see really the truth we can take from Genesis 40 Lord I definitely don't want to exalt what my wisdom is and what my words say I definitely want to just share what you have for us tonight Lord I pray that you use it please help me Help all of us, Lord, to be attentive to the Word of God. And may our hearts be challenged tonight. May our soul be challenged and just decide to be more like your Son. And we'll praise you for it, Lord. Thank you for this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So many of us, we just read in Genesis 40, many of us know the story of Joseph. Uh, they even have the movie, Joseph, uh, Prince of King of Dreams or something like that. I remember watching that as a kid. Um, Joseph, we know he was Jacob's son and um, the Bible says that he was well favored because Joseph uh, was born out of Jacob at a very old age. And because of that, he gave him a coat of many colors. And that brought a lot of envy toward his brothers. And what was special about him is not only that he was the, the favorite child, if you will. And uh, what special was he had these dreams and he almost had like a prophecy kind of thing that the Lord gave him. And one of them was the binding of the sheaves and um, his sheave would rise up above all his brother's sheaves. There was another dream that he had with the sun and the moon and the 11 stars were bowing down unto him. And what happened was the brothers got jealous and because of their jealousy, they threw him into a pit and eventually they got sold to Potiphar. I actually love in Genesis 39, as he's going from uh, being in this pit and now being into prison, four times in Genesis 39, the Bible says the Lord was with him. The Lord was with him. There was drama with Potiphar's wife and she tried having um, an advancement, if you will, and got falsely accused, and he was sent to prison. But here in Genesis 40, 
We just read about two officers of the Pharaoh. You have the chief butler and the chief baker. They both defended Pharaoh. They both got placed into this prison with Joseph for a while. And I guess one night here, they both have dreams in that same night. And the next day, Joseph noticed they were sad. Their countenance was sad. And he was asking, why are you sad this day? What's, what, what's, what's wrong? What's, what's the matter? And the butler and the baker tell their dreams. And let me just quickly just recite them. But uh, the butler dreamed that there was a vine in front of him. And the vine started, it had three branches. And it was almost as though it was getting ready to bud. And the blossom shot forth. And it brought forth ripe grapes. And the butler had to take the grapes and put it to the cup and serve it to Pharaoh. And he didn't understand it. Joseph interpreted the dream. He says, hey, those three branches that you're looking at in your dream, those are three days. And in three days, you're going to be serving Pharaoh his cup just like you used to before he got sent into prison. But back in verse 14, look at verse 14. Look what he said in verse 14. The first four words, he said, but think on me. But think on me. He's saying, hey, remember me. Remember me. The rest of the chapter, it was finally the baker's turn and he said he had three white baskets, and on top of the basket, he had baked goods on his head. But these birds were eating him. They're eating the, the, the baked goods on the basket, the top basket. Joseph sadly interpreted, and he said, hey, those three baskets, those are representing three days. But you're not going to go back to Pharaoh's, going back to being a baker for the Pharaoh. You're actually going to die in three days, and the birds are going to eat off your head. The butler was to return to his butlership and the baker was to hang and die. I mean, we see that obviously take place at the end of that chapter there. We read these passages and we look at the stuff that Joseph had gone through and through his faithfulness to the Lord. But tonight, I don't want to talk about Joseph. I don't want to talk about Joseph. Tonight, I want to talk about the chief butler. I just got done sharing about Pharaoh's or Joseph's background and uh, wrongfully being accused and wrongfully imprisoned and that's a message within itself and how he stood for the Lord and the Lord was with him the Bible says three four times in Genesis 39 but that's not who we're going to address tonight look at verse number 23 he said yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph but forgot him or for, forgot about him we're going to address the chief butler tonight because number one he offended Pharaoh he was sent to prison he had what was considered a bad dream and he met someone in that prison who knew how to interpret dreams who was joseph ultimately and turns out the dream was a great dream for him it wasn't a nightmare and it turns out that future events would happen he'd be forgiven he'd be brought back he'd be back where he was used back to serving pharaoh and you remember i just read in verse 14 he said but think on me show kindness unto me make mention unto me unto pharaoh the butler was given a blessing he was undeserving of. The butler was given mercy when he should have stayed in prison. But Joseph helped him, and now he's back to being the chief butler, but here's the problem. He made a mistake. The mistake that the butler made was not offending Pharaoh that we just saw in verse number 1. The mistake was verses 23. He was brought back to butlership, and we know the events happened there with the baker, but verse 23 he forgot about Joseph. The butler forgot about Joseph. The butler went back to living his what, old life, and he wasn't even thinking about who helped him. The butler went back to what he was doing without even crossing his mind on how he ended up back there. His mistake was that he didn't remember Joseph. He forgot all about it. And we have to be careful, Christians. We, If we aren't careful... We're going to make the same mistake as the butler to the point where we've been free from prison. We've been free from being in this pit. We have gone through this life and we just get so busy with life that we forget about the one who helped us. And with God's help, I want to preach and really share and help us not to make the mistake of the butler to where we forget about who helped us out of bondage. We forgot who helped us to a better life. We forgot who helped us undeservingly. We forgot whose mercy was given to us. If I can remind you tonight, I want to remind you, don't forget. Don't forget. Don't forget. Because I believe too often you and I, we, we're like this chief butler where we get a blessing from someone and we go through life and we didn't even deserve the blessing. 
when while we're enjoying the life we forget what we've been given why did the brother forget some speculations number one i thought he got caught up doing other things number two what joseph requested just wasn't important enough to him and number three he simply just didn't care and we have to be careful because when we go through our Christian life and we think, oh, we were so blessed and oh, we're so great. How wonder how often we end up like the chief butler. We get caught up doing other things. Whatever the Lord requests just isn't important to us. And I wonder if some people who just simply do not care. Simply do not care. Let's not make the mistake. I mean, we, 2024, people have a mind of forgetfulness all the time. I, uh, I gotta, don't mean to call out Ellie, but I or no Ellie. There was a uh, last week. I had a niece. Um, I said, "Hey, go downstairs, grab this one thing, and come back upstairs." It's super simple. She goes downstairs, spends five minutes, comes upstairs. She goes, "I forgot what you were telling me to look for." We live in a mind, a world where our mind is constantly moving, moving, moving to where we forget about things. I mean, we can't even leave the store, or we can't even come home from the store without forgetting something. We've all gone to the store for that one thing. But then when you go shopping, you get busy with other things. And perhaps you see someone, then you talk to them, and uh, you grab a other couple things, and then you go home, and then by the time you get home, you forget the one thing you're supposed to go to the store for. I know I've been guilty of that. And one of the most unappreciative, unappreciative things that we can do as Christians is to be a Christian who's forgetful. Who's forgetful. So don't forget. Remember Mary and Martha. You have all know the story when Luke chapter 10, I believe, and Mary and Martha... They bring Jesus comes over to their house and Martha's trying to do all this stuff and clean and uh, take care of food and trying to help that Jesus, you know, accommodate for Jesus. And Martha said, hey, Mary, Jesus, tell Mary to come help me. Do you not see that I'm cumbered about with much serving? I'm busy. Martha forgot that Jesus wasn't there to be served. Martha forgot that Jesus wasn't there for them to make him a meal. He just wanted to spend time with them. Mary chose the good part, the Bible says. We can't be so good busy to where we forget we forget so tonight don't forget don't forget so what do you mean don't forget number one don't forget your salvation don't forget your salvation it is so good to be saved it is so good to be saved listen honestly you and i ought to split hell wide open for not for the things we did but for who we are we're sinners but thank God for Romans 5, 8. But God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Salvation is great. It is so great to be saved. Listen, if you weren't saved, you wouldn't have a purpose in life. If you weren't saved, if you if it wasn't for salvation, we wouldn't have we wouldn't be here tonight. We wouldn't know each other. Thank God for salvation. You once was lost, but now and found. You once was blind, but now you see. Hey, don't forget about that. Don't forget about the day you got saved. Don't forget that God saved your hell-bound, sinful soul. Don't forget about your salvation. Let's not be like the butler to where we, we just go through our life and we just forget about salvation. You forget about salvation. Number one, don't forget about your salvation. Number two, don't forget about answered prayers from God. God answers prayers. God answers prayers. This butler forgot about the answer to his dream from Joseph and I wonder how many times we forget answers to prayer from God listen God ain't no God is not a genie in the bottle where we just rub three times get our three wishes and say alright you can go back in the bottle I'll talk to you when I need you God doesn't work like that don't forget your answer prayers and let me say this if you don't have answer prayers it's probably because you're not praying Philippians 4 6 be careful for nothing but in everything give thanks be careful for nothing but everything, sorry, but by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Don't forget answered prayers from God. Number three, don't forget it was God that brought you through, not you. So what do you mean by that? God's the one that got you through your life and it wasn't because of your wisdom, because of your brain, because of your knowledge. Pastor mentioned that Sunday night, the, the, the last part of his sermon. I was like, man, that's exactly what I'm preaching on Wednesday night. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 6, fifth book of the Bible. You're in Genesis. Go four more books. Deuteronomy chapter number 6. Don't forget it was God that brought you through, and it was not you. 
Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and then the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter number 6. Look at verse number 1. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that you might do them in the land whether you go to possess it. Verse 2. That thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's son. Talk about the whole generation. Let him, let it know, let it be known all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord of thy fathers hath promised thee in the land which flow with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Now verse 5, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them which thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou riest up. Talking about, hey, I want you to teach your kids everything at all the time. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontless between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not. Verse 11, And houses full of all good things which thou fillest not. Pay attention there. He said, The houses you don't even, you don't even fill them. They're already full. The wells dig which thou diggest not. Vineyards and olive trees which thou plantest not. But thou hast eaten and be full. Look at verse 12. Then beware lest thou forget the Lord which brought thee out of the land of Egypt and from thy house of bondage. He's saying here in Deuteronomy chapter 6, he's telling Moses is telling the children, hey, obey God's command. Obey the word of God. Obey, obey. And he's saying, teach your two children. No matter where you are, tell them about what God did. Tell them about the statutes and the commandments and the judgments. Verse 10, he says, I'm going to bring you to Canaan land. I'm sure we know that story, that passage there. When he brought them to the promised land, he said, I'm going to give you houses. In great and goodly cities that thou build, meaning I'm going to give you these buildings. You didn't even have to work for it. I'm going to give you these houses full of good things. You didn't even fill it. It's already furnished. I'm going to give you wells dig that you didn't even dig. I'm going to give you vineyards and olive trees that you didn't even plant. Because when you're eating and full, he said, hey, beware you forget about the Lord. He said, why would you, why are we telling them to not forget? Because it was God that brought you out. It was God that brought them. Go to Deuteronomy 8. It should be the next page over for you. He repeats the same thing. Verse 10. When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he hath given me, given thee. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God, and not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. Lest, the word lest there means for fear of. So for fear of... But thou hast eaten and art full and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein and thy herds and thy flocks multiply and thy silver and gold is multiplied and all that thou hast is multiplied. Verse 14, then thine heart be lifted up and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the house of e land of Egypt from the house of bondage. God's saying here, hey, don't forget it was me that helped you. It wasn't you. It wasn't you. Obey and love God and obey the Lord and do your best to serve him because he's the one that brought you through your Christian life. It wasn't you. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. So be careful with going through your life and thinking, oh, I will live a blessed life and oh, I have this and from God and oh, that from God. And you'd be careful thinking that you have everything because of yourself. No, God brought you through. Don't ever forget about that. Number one, don't forget your salvation. Number two, don't forget answer prayers from God. Number three, don't forget it was God that brought you through. It wasn't you. Number four, don't forget the works of God. Don't forget the works of God. Go to the book of Psalms, please. Middle of your Bible, Psalm chapter number 78. Don't forget the works of God. God is doing a work. Don't forget about that. God has done a work. 
Don't forget about that. Psalm 78. Look at verse 1. Give ear. Psalm 78. We're going to go sword drill style. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known and our fathers have told us. Look at verse 4. We will not hide them from their children. What are you talking about? The commandments and the statutes, the word of God. We're not going to hide them from their children. Showing the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works he had done. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed the law in Israel, that we, which he commanded our fathers that they should make known to their children, that the generation to come might know them, even the children should be born who should arise and declare them to their children. Verse 7, why are we telling the people about the works of God? Look, verse 7, that they might set their hope in God. And look, not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. The psalmist said, hey, I want you to tell the generation about the word of God. I want you to tell them so they don't forget. I want you to tell them about all what God is doing. And number four, don't forget the works of God. Why? So they might set their hope, meaning you share the works that God has done in your life and the works that God has done in others' life and the works that God has done in our church. Tell someone about that. Tell someone about that because they might have hope. That's the Bible said there. They might set their hope in God and not forget about the works that God has done. Don't forget the work that God is doing. Don't forget about what God is doing at Aurora Baptist Church. We have such a blessed church, and we ought to not forget and never forget what the Lord has done. One of my life verses, Psalm 126, 5. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. The Lord, the Lord has done great things for us. Don't forget the works of God. I want to mention this too. God is still working, even if it doesn't involve you. So what do you mean by that? You know how many self-centered Christians are? Oh, God's not helping me. God's not working in my life. God's not doing this. God's not doing that. But look at that person. God's doing them. No, stop. Get your eyes off yourself. If God's doing a work in their life, that means God's still working. God's still working if it doesn't involve you. Sometimes we get so selfish that we think that God isn't working because it's not impacting us. But God doesn't work like that. He's not only supposed to work in your life. So don't forget about the works of God. Number five. Don't forget about God's benefits. Psalm 103. Should be a few pages over. Psalm 103. Psalm 103. Look at verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Verse 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all his benefits. Don't forget about God's benefits. You know, there's benefits of being a Christian. And it's not just so you can look spiritually higher than everybody. Spirits look down on everyone spiritually. No, we have benefits as a Christian. The psalmist said, bless the Lord and forget not all his benefits. There are so many benefits to being a child of God. There are so many benefits to being a Christian. Because the world, they think they have everything. When really, I think we know the answer, they have nothing. They have nothing. The number one thing we have over them is that we have the Lord. We have Jesus. And they need Jesus. And listen, that's the greatest benefit of all. We have salvation. We have peace. We have the word of God. We have fellowship. We have a church to gather. We have a purpose to life. Hey, that is a benefit of being a Christian. You have the Bible. There's churches now all over these communist countries that wish they can gather like us. They wish they can help in the word of God. They wish that they can preach the gospel. But if they do, they're getting martyred. Don't forget about the benefits of being a Christian. Don't forget the benefits of being a Christian in America. You have liberty to share a gospel track without being attacked by the police. You have the benefits that God has given you, and you ought to not forget about that. You ought to not forget about that. I talked about the world. Listen, they can have all the money. They can have all the fame. They can have all the subscribers and the fortune. But if they don't have Jesus, they have nothing. They can have a multiple commas on their bank account. But in God's eyes, if they don't have the Lord, they're broke. They can have a millions of subscribers. But if they don't have the Lord, they have nobody. 
But as a Christian, you can be broke. You can have no friends. You can be unpopular. You can not be popular at school or in this world. But if you have Jesus, you have everything you need. Don't ever forget about that. Don't ever forget about the benefits that God's given you. You have a church you can gather at. Be at church. Number six, don't forget the word of God. Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Talking about benefits. Oh, this work. We'll give you these benefits. We'll give you this 401k. We'll give you this, uh, these amount of PTOs per paycheck and all these benefits. Uh, they don't compare to God's benefits. I want to throw a dad joke in there. The retirement plan is out of this world. So I just want to share that. Psalm 119, number six. Don't forget the word of God. Look at verse 16. Look what the psalmist said here. I will delight myself in thy statutes. You delight yourself in the word of God. You ought to do that. Look at the rest of it. I will not forget thy word. Thy word. One of the mistakes Christians make is we think we can just go through this life, say, oh, I love Jesus. Oh, I love this. And got my coffee cup and I got my wristband. Whoa, WWJD. I got the fish in my car, but we don't know anything about the word of God. We need to know the word of God. You forget about reading the Word of God. Hey, if you aren't doing the Bible reading plan, that's fine. You ought to be reading your Bible, though. I say it from the pulpit. I just told someone on Sunday. The more you're in the Bible, the more the Bible's in you. You. Get in the Bible. Listen. You will not live a purposeful, joyful, fulfilling Christian life if you are not reading your Bible. You are not reading your Bible. If you're not reading your Bible, you're, what is the whole purpose of Christianity if you're not reading the Word of God? You need the Word of God. It is your, I say it in Sunday school, it's your spiritual food. It's your spiritual food. Because while you want to eat your burgers and eat your pancakes and all this, you can feed your flesh and you get so full we don't want to do anything. Hey, you read the Word of God and you feed your spiritual food and spiritual food, you're going to want to do something. Feed your flesh or feed your spirit with the Word of God. Don't forget about the Word of God. Listen, you will fall in your Christian life if you're not reading your Bible. I guarantee it. A lot of people who fall in the faith, if you will, is simply because they stopped reading their Bible. The Bible was not sweeter than the honeycomb to them. Psalm 119. You need to read your Bible. I seen a sign. Um, I wish I bought it. I took a picture of it. It was at um, a Goodwill. And, he, and the, the sign said this. A Bible that is falling apart often belongs to someone who isn't falling apart think about that a bible that's falling apart is often belonging to someone who isn't i don't need an answer but let me ask you is your bible falling apart don't forget the word of god number seven don't forget the purpose of church don't forget the purpose of church i won't have a verse for that but i want to mention the purpose of the church I've had this issue before in the past where there was just so much that I needed to do when it comes to ministry I mean I I did I was helping the sound booth I would teach Sunday school I do my bus route and um, and then I help lead music and then uh, do the choir and I have a lot of things I do at the church but that's not my purpose of coming to church and what happened was back in the before I had a, a realization I would do all these things and Wake up Sunday morning. And say, oh, I gotta do my bus route. I gotta, um, I gotta uh, make the banner. I gotta, I gotta uh, get the choir looks. I gotta do this and do that, and all these different things for the church. I gotta do this and that for the church, and I got so worked up and busy that I forgot about the number one purpose of coming to church. Listen, you don't come to church to do your ministry, though. That's good. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not trying to speak blasphemies here. You don't come to church just to f to do your ministry. You don't come to church to please your pastor. You don't come to church to see your Christian friends. You don't come to church to fulfill your religious obligation. You don't come to church so you can avoid someone in the church calling you or texting and saying, hey, where were you? We don't come to church to fulfill a religious check mark of the week saying, oh, I'm good, I went to church. No, that's not the purpose of coming to church. The number one purpose to come to church is to meet with God. The number one purpose to come to church is to hear the preaching of the word of God. The number one purpose to come to church is to grow stronger as a Christian. So church, don't forget the purpose of the church. 
Let's not get so busy doing the ministries. Don't get me wrong. You ought to be busy doing ministries, but that's not the number one reason why you come to church. You don't get so busy in the church that you don't need to listen to preaching. You don't get so busy in the church that you don't need to listen to the teaching in Sunday school. You come to church to hear from God. You come to church to meet with the Lord. Perhaps you come to church and you get so busy with things here and there and perhaps maybe you get critical with something that the church did or someone did and maybe even get bothered or maybe even get sidetracked. You will miss the number one purpose to even coming to church. To meet with the Lord. To meet with the Lord. Two more. Number eight. Don't forget about the teaching and the preaching of God's word. Go to James chapter one. Toward the end of your Bible. Toward the end of your Bible. You'll probably see the book of Hebrews and then go to the book of James. James, if you know where Revelation is, you'll hit Jude and then the three letters of John and the two letters of Peter and go back and you'll have the book of James. James chapter 1. While you're going to James, I'll mention again, number one, don't forget about your salvation. Don't forget about your answer prayers from the Lord. Don't forget it was God that brought you through it and it wasn't yourself don't forget about the works of God don't forget about God's benefits don't forget the word of God don't forget the purpose of church and number eight don't forget the teaching and the preaching of God's word not just God's word but don't forget about the teaching and the preaching pastors always mention this he says hey you may not need this sermon now but I want you to stick it in the file of your head why so you don't forget go to James chapter 1 look at verse 22 But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, here's the example he's saying, he is like unto a man, beholding his natural face in a glass, and, for be, and maybe he has flaws in his face. For behold, he beholdeth himself, and he goeth his way, and look at this, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso look into the perfect law of liberty, that's the Bible. The perfect law of liberty is the word of God. And continue it therein. He being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. So James here is talking to the church and he's saying, hey, I want you not just to take the word of God and hear it. I want you to apply it. I want you to do it. Be doers of the word. Because someone who just takes the word of God and doesn't apply it, it's like a man who maybe has flaws on his face and he looks in the mirror and he thinks he looks good and he walks away, but he forgets about the flaws that he has. So he's saying here, when you, look, when you come to church and you hear the word of God and you don't apply it, you're forgetting about the flaws that you need to address. Don't forget about that. He said right there, he forgets what manner man he was and he says right there, whoever looks into the word of God and listens to the teaching and the preaching of the word of God and continues therein, not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer shall be blessed in his deed. We're not here just to be hearers of the Bible and to have uh, grow in knowledge and then move on with our life. You need to apply the word of God and put it into practice. Because if we forget what we hear and don't put into practice, how are you going to be blessed, the Bible says? He said, Whoso look into the perfect law of liberty, he not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer, that man or woman shall be blessed. Don't forget about teaching and the preaching of God's word. Number nine, last of all, as a church, don't forget our first love. Revelation chapter two. Don't forget our first love. There's a lot of churches today, and we're very we're subject to it if we're not careful to where we forget our first love. What's that first love? Look at verse number one. Revelation chapter two, verse one. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, these things in his right hand. Or sorry, he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear with them which are evil. You can't even stand them. And thou hast tried them which say they're apostles and are not and has found them liars. He called them out, the church, and has borne, talking about they've carried people and has patience, and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. Why? Why did Jesus say this? Because thou has left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works. 
or else I will come unto thee quickly and remove that candlestick out of his place, except thou repent, repent, repent. Don't forget our first love as a church. All those eight things to talk about in, in the individual life, don't forget this, but as a church, let's not forget our first love. The church of Ephesus was, the letter was written here, and God said, hey, I know your works. You're a hardworking church. I know the labor you do for me. I know the patience and everything he said in verses two to three. But the gods had a problem. They forgot about their first love. The church's first love, and it ought to be the church's first love, is Jesus Christ. Don't forget who we are doing this for. Don't forget your first love as a church, Jesus Christ. Because listen, if we forget our first love, we're not going to be a church. We're going to be no better than a country club for saints, a hymn singing rotary club. We can't forget it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. The church is his bride, and we cannot forget what's most important, loving Jesus and making Jesus known to others. That's the purpose of the church, to love Jesus and to make him known to others. Those nine things. You say, Brother Allen, how can I, how can I avoid forgetting? I'm, I'm busy at school. I'm, I'm busy at homework. I'm busy with my kids. I'm busy with my family. I'm busy with work. I'm busy with the stress of life. How can I not forget? How can I not be like the butler? Have things to help you remember. Go to New, uh, Numbers, fourth book of the Bible. Fourth book of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and the book of Numbers. Numbers chapter 15. How can I avoid forgetting? How can I avoid the mistake? Well, God shows us here how you can remember. Numbers chapter 15, look at verse number 38. Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that make them fringes in the border, borders of their garments throughout their generations, and that they put upon the fringe of their borders a ribbon of blue. This is what it looks like here. The, the idea of a ribbon of a blue on their garments, this is what it, if it would pull up, there. God said, when they make their garments upon the fringe of the borders, put a ribbon of blue. Look at verse 39. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look upon it. Look at it. That you may look upon it and do what? Remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. That ye seek not after your own heart and after your own eyes, after which ye used to go a whoring. Verse 40. That you may remember and do all the commandment, my commandments and be holy unto your God. God told the children of Israel on the border of their garments that I want you to put a blue strand across. Why? So you don't forget. Why? So you don't go seeking after the lusts of the flesh. And here, if you don't want to forget about the benefits of your Christian life and your salvation and your answered prayer, set a reminder or something as a symbol in your life so where you don't forget. To where you don't forget. Maybe it's having your Bible always in your car. Maybe you have a Bible verse sticker in the back of your phone case. Maybe it's a verse on your lock screen, or your wallpaper. Maybe it's a gospel track you always have, always carry. Have something that is a reminder to where we ought to do our best in honoring the Lord. Set a reminder. Set something in your life that says, okay, this is my symbol where I'm just not going to forget about it. Maybe it's a bookmarker. Maybe it's, um, maybe it's a car freshener with a Bible verse. Whatever it is in your life, just like God had them put a blue strand on the end of their garment, you ought to set something in your life as a symbolism of, hey, I'm not going to forget. That's how you don't forget. By setting something in your life as a symbol. And most importantly, the nine things I said, God doesn't forget you. God doesn't forget you. Go to Isaiah, last verse, and I'm done. Isaiah 49. You were just in Psalm if you go past a couple of books, you'll hit the book of Isaiah. So you'll hit um, Ecclesiastes, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and then Song of Solomon, and then the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 49, look at verse number 14. I'll be done here. But Zion said... Verse 14, Isaiah 49, verse 14. But Zion, talking about the children of Israel, they were complaining and said, The Lord hath forsaken me, and my Lord hath forgotten me. The children of Israel thought that God forgot about them if God was leaving them. 
But look at verse 15. Can a woman forget her sucking child that she should not have compassion on her son of her womb? Yea, look at this. They may forget. So God's saying here, hey, someone as, a, as loving as a mother, someone who is nurturing their newborn child and is providing food for them, someone who's willing to nurse them, and that bond is so strong, yet they may forget. But look at the rest of the verse. Yet will I not forget thee. Oh, sorry, Donovan. I got to hurry. Sorry. He gave me, he had the alarm. God doesn't forget you. God doesn't forget you. He said there, a, a woman, a, a newborn mother with a newborn child, they may have that bond that is so strong, they may even forget about their child. But I won't forget you. I won't forget you. Don't forget God because he didn't forget about you. Don't forget your salvation because he didn't forget about you. Don't forget about your answered prayers because he didn't forget about answering them. Don't forget it was God that brought you through because he didn't forget about you. Don't forget about the works of God because he didn't forget about you. Don't forget about the benefits because God didn't forget about you. Don't forget about the word of God because he didn't forget you. Don't forget the purpose of his church because he didn't forget about you. Don't forget about the preaching and the teaching of the word of God because he didn't forget about you. And as a church, let's not forget about our first love, Jesus Christ, because God didn't forget about us. Don't forget. Don't forget. Set something up as a symbol for not forgetting the Lord because we may forget, but God doesn't forget. And that is the number one reason why we ought to not forget. We ought to remember God because he always remembered us. In Genesis 41, you don't have to go there, but it took two years for the butler to remember about Joseph. May we never get in that position to where we forget about what God has done. Two years gone by, we forget to read our Bible. Two years have gone by, we forget about this situation that we prayed for and God came through. Two years come by and you're maybe doing something great for God. Don't forget it was God that brought you through. Two years gone by, there was a message that you needed that will help you two years later. Don't forget about that. Let it not be two years. Let's not make the mistake of the butler where he forgot about Joseph. He forgot about Joseph. Don't forget. Don't forget. Amen? Let's pray. Father, forgive us. I know there's been times in my life I forgot. I forgot to read my Bible. I forgot to pray. And it wasn't because something so big just got in the way. I just chose to get distracted. I chose to go on phone before throne. I chose to feed my flesh before feeding my spirit. And I pray you forgive me. I pray you forgive those. Tonight, Lord, who have you spoken to? May we not make the mistake, Lord, like the butler. May we remember. Because ultimately you remembered us. I pray the message was a help, a reminder to always, always, always think of you. Just as Joseph told the butler, think on me and remember me. May we always think of you and all that you've done for us. I pray this message was a challenge to all of us, myself included, that it can make a difference in our Christian life to remember, remember, remember the mighty things you have done in our lives, the great things you have done, the where we're glad. We love you and we'll praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Not the Wilkerson's, but tonight we're going to be doing the other, or it is Wilkerson's, forgive me. We're going to be doing the missions offering for the Wilkerson's. So hopefully you can give to that. Ushers, thanks for doing it. If you're able to give faithfully or able to give just a little bit, remember, a little, much, little as much when God is in it. So if you're able to give toward that, God will provide, okay? Um, song requests. Let's take a song. Are we going to have to sing a cappella? If not, do you have Lucas? Three? Let's see what page three is. What was that? Come Thou Fount, I think? Good. Yeah, that's a great song, okay? Number three, let's sing it, Come Thou Found. Here we go. Come Thou Found of every blessing, tune my heart to sing Thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, called for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet Sung by flaming tongues above Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it Mount of thy redeem Let's stand together, let's sing the last now, sing it out 
Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I come straight to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to lead the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Amen, amen. I'm glad you guys came to church tonight. Let's pray. Um, guys, uh, I'm going to send you the photo. Make sure it's on one of the right iPads. Uh, I just have a quick announcement after service, so let's pray. Father, thank you so much, Lord, for the message and really just the spirit of the church and just the singing. What a great time to gather, Lord. And I pray the message, Lord, would challenge us or we go through life and we do get so busy, myself included. Maybe not get so busy with life that we just simply forget. May we not make the mistake of the butler, Lord, but to remember all that you have done for us. You brought us out of bondage. You brought us out of prison. And we just pray, Lord, that you help us. Thank you again for this night. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen, amen. amen. So uh, real quick, the chosen few and the triumphant trio. We're not going to practice tonight, but if you could send me the song, that way I could put it in the back. Gentlemen, did you guys get that photo? All right, if you put it on the top iPad or this one. Um, don't forget this. I won't mention it out loud. But please see me if you have any questions on that. Do not. If you know, you know. If not, I will help you. Other than that, yes, Jane. Yeah, we'll do it Sunday. So other than that, if you can see that, if you have any questions, talk to me about it. Other than that, thanks for being here. You are dismissed. Praise the Lord. Oh, uh, Miss Elisa, this is yours. Shannon, we get to sleep. I've got a heart that's full of faith filled helplessness. There are mountains ahead that I can't move by myself. But I know when I'm weak, he's strong. And I can barely breathe. There's still a song, even though it's hard right now. I'm not here on my own So when it seems it can't be done I know God